Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, Professor. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um. So let's continue. Uh with contents in the last class. So we talked about reaction force. I think the react, um, like what kind of reaction force, force including force and including moment as general term, uh, a boundary condition can uh, provide is kind of confusing part of uh, to many students um, in my previous semester based on my experience teaching this class. So I talk about that the most um, commonly see the boundary condition uh, they are either roller support. We mean that um, because it's only constrained to translate. Uh, sorry, uh, this translational degree freedom in the y direction. Uh, so the reaction force is only in y direction. Y direction. Uh, it cannot rotate. It cannot constrain the rotational degree freedom. It's free to rotate and it is free to move in the x direction. That's why there's no reaction force in the x direction and a reaction moment. Uh, for the second one. Pin joint, it means that it cannot move in the X direction, it cannot move in the Y direction, constrain the translational degree freedom in both X, Y. That's why the reaction force is X, Y. But because the pin joint is free to rotate, so there's no moment. And the third one is, uh, is a clamp situation. So at this point, it cannot move in the X direction, Y direction. So reaction force in the X and Y, and it cannot rotate. So there's a bending moment reaction moment uh, provided by the wall or this boundary condition. So this is like the most common uh, scene situation. And I was checking the statics test book and screenshot this one. I think this is uh, provide a more complete um, idea of like what kind of reaction force uh, for each different boundary condition. So uh same at boundary county uh roller support as I said here. So no matter what direction your uh, structure is, it doesn't matter. Uh as long as it's roller support, it means that uh it's free to move in the X direction, then the reaction force is only in the Y direction. And they gave a uh, example here in real situation. So you can make connection of everything we learned in this class or in your previous class with something happening in real life. So you can understand things much better. And then this is um, the either a cable or short link. So in this situation, it depends on the direction of the cable or the link itself. So of course, if it's a cable, it means that it can only provide reaction force in this direction, right? Uh, but if it's short link, it's either the short link can either have tensile force or compressive force. So it the reaction force itself can either be in this direction. Sorry. Yeah. This direction or this direction. Uh, so this is the uh, the second situation. And of course, in the real life, you may see something like this. And the reaction force, again, only in the actual direction of the link itself. The third one is, uh, uh, of course, we imagine that there's, there's, there's no friction in this direction. So it means it's free to move in this act in this actual direction. So in this situation, again, uh, the reaction force is only perpendicular either this rod or this rod here. It does not depend on the, your structure itself, directional structure itself, doesn't matter. The structure can be in any direction, but reaction force is only perpendicular to either this rod, supporting rod, or this rod. Um, a fourth situation is similar as the pin joint, as I mentioned here. So it's basically, it's free to rotate. Uh, so in for this situation, um, it means that either in, we put as X or Y, or depending on the magnitude of X or Y, if this one, these two are equivalent, right? Either you resolve in the X, Y direction or put in one direction and one magnitude this is equivalent. So it means uh, prevent translation degree freedom in the X and the Y, uh, free to rotate. 
And the last one, fixed support is same as what I said here, the cat never been situation. So basically, um, if you have a structure like this, it means that it cannot rotate at this point. Um, so force in X, force in Y, and a moment. So this is uh you normally see in a um kind of a bridge, uh it's clamped on one end and free on the other end. And this is normally what you see a pin joint in real life situation. So any question about the uh, boundary condition and the reaction force provided by the boundary condition? Uh, will you be able to show this on Canvas? Yes, I can update this one on Canvas later. Um, because I screenshot this one right before the class, I was I was reading the textbook, um, so I didn't put in the previous version. But I I I will update it later. Any other questions? Okay, so this is uh help this part can clear you about the like reaction force part, and the next one um I feel like students constantly get confused is the uh sign convention. So it's like, I know what kind of force you can provide, but when you do the free ball diagram, what direction, what is considered positive, negative, what direction should I put there um, uh, for the reaction force um, this in the free ball diagram? How to put a sign of the unknown reaction in a free ball diagram. So the first one, the easiest one, of course, if you just see the structure, you see the external applied force, you can kind of feel what direction the force is. Let's use a simplest example. If you have a bar and you have a force applied here, of course, we know that the reaction force applied by the wall, by the boundary condition, is absolutely in this direction, right? So in this situation, we can just put direction there directly, and we know that your calculate result with pop with a positive value and that will be the magnitude and direction is already indi indicated here. So this is uh, for the simple situation, if you can figure out before you calculate, you can, if you can figure out the direction of the reaction force. It, you assume the direction by inspection. And second one is that for sometimes if it's a complicated situation and you look at structure, you look at boundary condition and the external apply force, you somehow you don't know. You don't know the what is the direction of reaction force that's used. Uh, this one as example, maybe some some students can figure out, but some students may be un, unsure. So let's say if I want you to uh, figure out like before calculating anything, what is the first question? What is the reaction force that this boundary condition this at point D has? What reaction force? Uh, X and Y, right? R X. R Y. Am I correct? This there should be no moment because it's a pin joint, as I said. And for the direction of in of reaction force in the x direction and in the y direction, I really don't know. By checking the boundary condition, by checking the structure, by checking the uh, external apply force. So in this situation, I just simply put everything in the positive direction. In the positive direction. 
Uh, so this should also work. So these are two ways. in positive direction. So if it's a pin joint, as I said, the reaction force provided by the um, pin joint, uh, it follow the direction, positive means it follow coordinates. So if it's positive x direction, it's positive. Uh, the reaction is in the positive x direction is positive. And also, if it's upward as coordinates indicated as the positive y, then it is positive y. But the tricky part is when it comes to a when you need to cut through a point, and you need to figure out what is the positive internal force. That is, uh, I think, is the most confusing part. Uh, in, in, based on my previous experience, let's say. Um, well, this part is easy because it follows coordinates force provided by the pin joint. Now let's focus on, let's say for this problem, we want to calculate the internal force at point E. And if we cut through the point E and internal force, if we take AD to do the equilibrium equation, and now we have a cutting surface that is in the on the AE section, so it's facing this direction. And if we take the CE, both will work. Um, to do the equilibrium equation, you get the same result. But now the cutting surface is on the CE section and it's facing this direction. So I mean, which one is considered as positive? Right? So for this one, I hope I can make it clear. Um, in this class, just in this class, uh, just explain once so you will not confuse for the rest of the semester. Um, so the sign convention for internal forces. Um, most of the time, if the coordinates is not given, we consider left, right, positive, x, upward, y. Uh, but of course, sometimes when we want to simplify, uh, simplify calculation, if it's inclined bar or something, we may have used the actual direction as local x. So that's a different situation. But in general, most situation, if it's not x coordinates not indicated, this is the coordinates. So now let's start from simple situation, tension. We have bar and it's an attention. And I'm pretty sure there's no confusion here that whenever it's tension, it's considered positive. Whenever it's compression, it's considered as negative, right? So let's say I have force applied in this way, and it generates tension in our bar, AB. And we know that when it's pass when it's tension is we defined as positive. And thing is that if we want to know the internal force at a random point within the bar, we need to cut through point C. Let's put a C here. The thing that what is a positive internal force? So then it depends on which section we take. Let's say let's separate. Let's use the left side. Each different color. Then this red one is a cutting surface when we take the AC section. And the same thing, we have the external applied force. 
here. And for this small section is also, the whole structure is in equilibrium. The small section should also be in equilibrium. So internal force generated on the C surface uh, of the AC section should be this direction. This is a positive internal, internal normal force. But we know that in, when we do the equilibrium equation, calculate some unknown internal force, we can take either side. Both sides should give you the correct answer. Now let's take the right side. And now the cutting surface, I use a different color. Same thing because it's tension here. Now on this CB section, this is a positive internal force direction. CB. So again, big picture of this one, tension um, is always considered as positive. So the internal force if it's, we take the left side, the C cutting surface at C is, this is positive. If we take the right side, now this direction is considered as positive internal force. So for the internal force, it really depends on which surface you are checking, right? So this is, uh, um, I think I have something I can show you guys. Um, not sure you can see me. Um, this is the one I use uh, to help explain this one. So the, we, you consider this is a whole bar, right? And if I apply tension and I check these two surfaces I cut through, I want to know the internal force at this cutting point. And let's say I imagine cut it through and I look at this surface and look at this surface, the internal force past normal force direction is that uh, on the red surface, this one is the positive internal normal surface. But same thing if I check on the this surface, on the blue surface, this direction is a positive normal force. So it's a little different than the external applied force is always follow the coordinates. This one does not exactly follow the coordinates. It depends on which surface you are checking. So the second one is the bending. So I hope everyone agrees with me that when it's bent upward, your statics textbook uh, defines this one as positive bending moment. Right? So this is a positive bending moment and I uh, still A and B, A, A. I should have done this nicer, but it's okay. Let's say I have this kind of bending moment to generate this is a positive bending moment and this is the negative bending moment based on our coordinates. You guys should agree with that, right? Bending upward positive bending moment. So now if we know this is positive bending moment and now we have uh, we need to know the internal moment at point C. Again, we put a random point C here. So now, again, if we take the left side of the beam, AC, same thing. We I used the red one. Now the internal bending moment at C point for the AC section, this is the positive internal bending moment, internal moment. And if we take the right side, let's use a different color. Now, 
clockwise becomes the positive internal bending bend moment at this surface if we take the right section. So again, when we talk about the in uh, the sign for the internal moment, it's not about like positive, it's always counterclockwise and uh, clockwise is always negative. That is only for externally applied force or reaction force is also considered one of the external applied force. For the internal force, again, it depends on the um the surface, the specific surface you are checking. And again, let's use this one. Same thing, red and blue part. And if you bend upward, it becomes the uh, positive bending moment. It is defined as positive bending moment in your statics um, textbook. So now if I only check the left side to generate same deformation, we know that I need to have a bending moment at a C point that is in this direction, what, right in this direction. And now if we check the right side to generate the same deformation, and for this, this surface, the positive bending moment now becomes this direction. That's why you see thing here. So you cannot say in the future like, oh, the counterclockwise is always positive, clockwise is always negative. No, for the internal force, depend on which surface. So the third one is the shear. A, B, um, and uh, I hope you guys agree with me that in your study textbook, uh, we consider this one as positive shear. So basically, if I have force, right side apply uh, downward and the left side upward, and it's kind of, I think some statics textbook uh, explain the way that if you generate a moment to make your uh, structure rotating clockwise, then it's positive shear. So you can just imagine if it's shear like this, it's positive shear. Now in this situation, again, if we take the, so let's say if you want to know the internal shear force at point, at a random point in this bar, um, then left side, On this surface, the positive shear means I should draw it upward, downward, positive shear force on this surface. Anyone? So the positive shear on this surface is downward or up, upward? Uh, downward. Downward. Yes, thank you. Thank you. It should be downward. Because again, back here, we consider this is a positive shear, right? This is a positive shear. And so if positive shear is in this way, and now I check this red surface, the shear force should be downward. So this is a positive shear. And again, we are checking the AC section and a C surface. And similarly, if we check the CB section, And on this surface, the positive shear should be upward. So I think it's easy playing to use this one. So again, this is positive shear. And now I check the, uh, the blue surface, the right section. And if we have shear like this, of course, the shear force generated on this blue surface is upward, right? So uh, again, uh, you cannot, in the future cannot say that, oh, upward is always positive shear, uh, downward is often negative. No, it depends on the surface you are checking, depend on surface. Uh, so if we put in one structure, let's say if for a whole structure, we take a small section, uh,
let's say this is a small section I take from big structure and on the each surface, I can just put it as all the internal normal force, this should be considered as positive. So some tests will use, put, explain it this way. And this is considered as the positive and shear force on this side should downward positive and on this side should be upward shear force. So um, any question about the sign convention? I hope I explained this one clear um, because uh, if you're confused about this part, it's really like easy to make mistake in your feature calculation. If you calculate internal force around all your, the calculation, the next step they are wrong. So um, make sure that you understand this part. If you're confused, come to my office hour. Um, oh, by the way, uh, I, I need to, so my office hour is already scheduled at 1.45 because I need to go to the lab this afternoon. Uh, I'm at home now, uh, I need to drive to school. So I probably will start the office hour at 2.10. Well, I would be a little late, but I, I still stay in the office for one hour. Um, now, once we are clear about reaction force, what kind of force the boundary condition can supply, and also the, the sign convention for external power force, the internal force, the next one is write the equilibrium equation. And equilibrium equation part should be easy. Um, Um, I believe our undergrad classes most time we dealing with two D situation. Uh, you may have three D situation in the future, but um, this class will be focused on two D situation. So for the two D situation, um, force in the x direction equal to zero, and force in the y direction equal to zero. This is a force equilibrium, and also we have the moment equilibrium equation moment about a point equal to zero. So this is the general equation for how to calculate the internal force. Uh, and the thing I want to emphasize here it, again is that first the x, y does not need to be the global x, y direction. It can be local x, y. If you have a bar that is inclined direction, I can use this actual direction of the bar as a local x direction to simplify your calculation, right? So, um, X, Y does not need to be global X, Y coordinates. In global X, Y. Coordinates. And also the point, uh, moment upon point equal to zero, the moment about the point is really uh, not, not fixed at a specific point. It's really any point we work, it just, at, when you choose at some point, the calculation is more complicated. And when you choose some rest point, then you may simplify calculation. So it really depends on um, like, how do you want to calculate it? So uh, try to choose a point that can eliminate most forces. It's just save you a lot of calculation time. But of course, I mean, sometimes if you choose a point that is more complicated than your classmates, it doesn't mean that you calculate the wrong result. In the end, if your method is correct, you still get the same correct answer. It's just you take more time to do the calculation. Um, so this is ab about the equilibrium equation. And of course, if it's equilibrium equation at a point, there's no moment equilibrium, right? Because if it's point, the web, the moment there at the a, a, a joint is not zero. So it's only force in the X and force in the Y. Um, Let's put it here. 
if it's a joint. Then it's only forcing x equal to zero, forcing y equal to zero. So a example I can show you. is let's say for this P, B point, this, this joint, when you write equilibrium equation here, it's only force in the X direction equal to zero, force in the Y direction equal to zero, but you cannot write a moment about point B equal to zero. No, it's, this point is free to rotate. It's only force equilibrium. Um, so now these are all the conceptual parts of uh, Start from the free ball diagram uh, and some details about the reaction forces, including what kind of reaction forces supply it provide, uh, a boundary kind can provide, and what the direction uh, sign convention for uh, reaction force, external applied force, and internal force, and how to write the equilibrium equation for uh, a general situation and a joint for 2D situation. So I consider these are the conceptual part of what we need to know before we start the example problem. Any question here? Okay, so if no question, let's start from the first one. Um, calculate internal force at point C. So how should we calculate this one? Anyone? Like big step, uh, what the first step, what the second step? Take the, you want to solve all the external forces first? Yeah. So the internal force at point C, so, uh, sorry, what did you say? I would start by solving all the external forces so we can like simplify everything acting on it. Yeah. So like equivalent uh, concentrated force for this one, right? Is that what I mean? For this distributive force. So I think there's one answer in the chat, uh, cut through the point C. So yes. So since we want to calculate internal force at point C, uh, we need to cut through point C. And to cut through point C, of course, uh, as I said here, you can either take the right side or left side, you will get the same answer. It's just some calculation will be simpler, some calculation will be more complicated. So for this one, if we take the AC section, we need to calculate the reaction force provided by the A first, right? We take the free body diagram of the whole beam we figure out the reaction force at point A and then do the free bar diagram of AC section and you can calculate internal force at a cut point, point C. Or another way is, is you take the right section, then in, in this way, you do not need reaction force here. You just take this section and do the free bar diagram, you're done. So for this one, I'm not 100% sure, but I prefer to, to take the Right section, CB section. Um, so you can do it another way of class to see if you can get the same answer. You should get the same answer. If not, you come to my office hour. Uh, if you take the AC section to the calculation, you should be the same. So let's say uh, in my class now, I will take the CB section. What kind of internal force at C section, at, at, at C surface, on C surface? A moment. Moment. Moment, force in X, force in Y, right? And let's say uh, by checking this structure, uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure, let's say, I, I'm not quite sure what direction the reaction force should be or internal force should be. Uh, and I want to put everything in the positive direction. What should be positive direction? Yeah. 
this should be positive uh, normal surface, right? I put a subscript C here. And then uh, for the shear force, positive shear force should be upward or downward on this surface. Upwards. Upward, thank you. And of course, the, let's see. The positive internal bending moment should be this direction. So in case anyone feel confused, this should be here. These are considered as positive internal force um, on the C surface if we take the CB section, similar situation here, right? So these are the positive internal force at the cutting surface. Now, uh, I, I think something just mentioned that we need to find the equivalent concentrated force for this discrete force uh, before we do the equilibrium equation. So for this one, what is the equivalent concentrated force? And where is applied the location? Let's talk about magnitude first. What is the magnitude of the concentrated force, equivalent concentrated force? Anyone? Or you can tell me how to calculate if you don't have a value. You would use similar triangles to basically find the magnitude of the, the height at point C. Um, compared to the 270 newtons per meter. And then you would do one half base times height to find the total magnitude. And it will be placed two meters from C. Yes, yes, thank you, correct. Thank you. Um, so how do I write this? Um, Let's uh, assume that this height is x. I don't know what the value it is, but as you said, it's the semi triangles. Then we know that, um, let's put it back here. This blue line, the height here is x. So uh, it should be x over uh, 270 equal to 6 three plus six, right? So in this way, we calculate x equal to 180 Newton per meter. And now once we have the x, uh, the equivalent constant force is integration under this area. And integration under this area for this one is simple because it's triangle. So it's basically the base times height half. Um, so the equivalent concentrated force should be equal to 180. Put the unit here, Newton per meter times and six meter half. This is the area and the distributive force, which is equal to 540. So now we figure out the magnitude uh, of the Equivalent concentrated force, uh, the location should be at a point that's two meter away from point C. So let's say that we have a D here. Uh, let's use this one as concentrated force, equivalent concentrated force, and put a D here. The distance of CD should be a third of total length of CB. So this should be two meter. CD equal to two meter. 
So now we have the magnitude, we have the location, right? Um, so in case in case anyone confused, again, I screenshot shot this one from the um, statics textbook. Um, for the distributed force, if you want to find use an con uh, equivalent constraint force in your equilibrium equation, the location is one third of the height, um, and area is the magnitude of the constraint force, uh, equivalent constraint force. So this is again from the statics textbook. Um, any question here? So for um, I think the. The main part as the uh, answer put in the chat is that you cannot use a 270 here directly because if you use 270 here, it's equivalent to the force of the whole on the whole beam, right? But now since we're only taking CB section, we need to check what is the equivalent force of only this area, not the whole beam. Make sense? Just need to be careful. So, so these are just like small details. Students don't really make a mistake. That's why I use this one as example. Now we can start the um, equilibrium equation calculation. So again, let's put um, So, um, force in x direction. Well, equal to zero, and it's obvious that the internal force at C surface at C point is equal to zero. There's no external apply force in the X direction. So it's easy to imagine that it should be zero. Uh, force in the Y direction equal to zero. So VC is, uh, be careful that when you put everything in the, uh, Equilibrium equation, everything now follow the coordinates. So uh, VC is positive, and now the equivalent constitutive force is negative. So VC equal to 400, uh, 540. And moment. Let's take the moment about point C. Um, so now the equivalent constitutive force we generated clockwise, clockwise a uh, moment, so clockwise should be a negative value in the equilibrium equation. In the equilibrium equation, everything follows the coordinates. So I put negative. And moment arm, take the moment about point C, it should be two meter. And uh, since I put here, MC is also clockwise, so MC minus MC equal to zero. So MC equal to negative 1080 Newton meter. Any question here? Um, why is MC negative? What? Sorry? Can you repeat why MC is negative? Oh. So now 
when we do the equilibrium equation, everything follows the coordinates. Everything follows the coordinates. And if we know that coordinates, as I said, is always, uh, X, Y, uh, what's it called? Right hand row. Uh, if we know this is the X, Y coordinates, this is always, based on the coordinates, this is always the positive moment based on coordinates. Am I right? So now in the equation, as I said, everything for the coordinates, this force about point C will generate a clockwise, so it's negative. This MC we put here again is based on coordinates is clockwise it should be a negative value so that's why we put it negative MC here okay thank you sorry I cannot hear you very well I'm uh, sorry I was just saying thank you okay okay you're welcome um how should we handle significant figures in the class so um <laughs> I don't have like three rule. Like in some class, they require you like three or something. Uh, I would say you can use whatever rules you use the previous class, but uh, in my class, I mean, and also in my design class, as long as you don't go crazy, like uh, 1.24567, that kind of thing, uh, it should be fine. We don't give penalty because uh, you're a significant digit, uh, but just make it reasonable. Three or four, that should be fine. Why choose two meter for point D? Is the moment calculate about C, about C point? It's the moment about C point. I'm calculating moment about C point equal to zero. So this one equivalent considered for the moment arm is two meter. That's why not six? Um, back to here, because centroid is one third. This location is one third. That's why in this situation, here is a centroid. And this one third becomes two. That's why when you calculate the moment and generate by equivalent concentrated force, the moment is two meters, it's not six meters. Yeah. Any other question? So uh, one thing I want to help you guys understand here, we calculate negative value. Uh, what does that mean? So basically mean that the calculated value is opposite the actual moment direction is update of what we put at the beginning here. So uh, as I said, we put in this way because we want to put everything in a positive direction. I'll simplify. Uh, we cannot figure out what is the actual reaction force direction, reaction moment, sorry, uh, internal moment direction. So we put everything in the positive. And if we calculate negative value, it means that the actual moment is in this direction. Make sense? Um, and I think it also makes sense in a way that, let's say, just imagine you have a beam. I clamped on one end, I have this three force, and you kind of expect that your beam will exaggerate deformation should be in this way, right? Should be in this way for this force apply. If I apply force upward, then it should bend in this way, but the force is downward, so it kind of expect that the beam, the exaggerated deformation should be downward. And now if you know that it's downward, now we take the right side, which back to our uh, previous topics. Let's say for this side, right side CV section, now I check this surface, the bending moment to generate a deformation like this. You kind of imagine that the internal bending moment at point C for the CB section should be in this direction. Make sense? So 
um, as an engineer, it's not about just calculation. In the end, you need to check if your calculation makes sense or not. So now you get negative value, you originally assume everything in the positive direction. Now you get negative value, it means that the actual moment direction is this direction. And then you, based on the structure, based on the external apply force, based on deformation, generated external force, it makes sense that on this side, I need to have a moment in this direction to generate deformation this way. Since MC is negative, you should keep direction. We initially, yes. Yes. So I want to talk about this a little more detail uh, since normally this causes a lot of uh, confusion. It is okay that let's say somehow uh, you originally assume your before your calculation, you original or you original figure out that your MC is in this direction. It is okay. And then in your calculation, you will get a positive value. Because let's say if let's let's use different color. Let's say I originally assume it's MC in this direction. That is that is fine. It doesn't mean that it's wrong. Um, I put a sign convention here just to make sure that when you retest it, you don't get confused why they're always putting positive way. Uh, but it is okay if you originally assume it's in this direction. And now in your calculation, you know that, okay, now this one doesn't change. Still for the point C, still generate a clockwise, right? So it's negative. Now the MC, because we put it as counterclockwise, now this becomes a positive. Now the final value you will get is a positive value. So it means that the actual internal moment direction is the same as what you assumed at the beginning. So in the end, can you see that it's the same? No matter I put in this way or in this way, you will get the same answer. Not, not exactly like same number, but um, you should represent the same direction of the internal force. So some students like, they really like, I really don't like students like compare the final answer, like who is correct, who is wrong. Some students calculate positive 1080, uh, 1080, and some students calculate negative 1080, and they will need to fight each other like, who is correct, who is wrong. No, it doesn't mean any students is wrong. If you originally assume it's in this direction, then it should, your calculate result should be negative. If you originally assume in this direction, then your calculate result should be a positive, but it both represent a moment with magnitude of this one and with direction in this direction. So both of them are correct. But the thing you need to be careful in your exam is that you need to put it clearly in your solution. So TA can figure out what is a positive and negative value means, right? When they see that your previous assume is in this direction, you should get a negative value. If your previous assume in this direction, you should get a positive value. Uh, any confusion? Okay, so now let's move on. To the second problem. Uh, so uh, now this is a uniform distribution force. So the equivalent force is much easier to calculate. Um, and we need to calculate the internal force at point E. How to calculate, what are the steps? What should we do first? Anyone? The free body diagram to calculate all the external forces acting on it, and then have to do like a second free body diagram for whatever section we're taking. Yes, yes, thank you. So this one is unlike this, uh, the first example, like you can just use one equilibrium equation, uh, one section to the equilibrium equation can, can be done. This one, you really need two, because let's say we cut through point E, you, You cut through point E, you either take, take the left side or right side, but both sides, there are no force. 
Let's say if you take left side A section, you need to know the reaction force at point A. And this one requires you to take the, to do the equilibrium equation of the whole AC bar, right? And if you take the EC section, the force applied by the DB bar is unknown. So you need to calculate what the force here uh, first. So then you need to do the equilibrium equation of the whole structure to get the force provided by this link. So uh, either way, you need to do the free body equation, equilibrium equation twice. It's not just one set of equation can be done. Uh, so let's say uh, taking either side should be fine. Let's, let's say in the class today, I take the AE section. And if we need to take the AE section as I said, we need to calculate the reaction force at point A, then for this pain joint, it's only constrain, constrain the uh, translation degree for the X and Y. So the reaction force is only X and Y, there's no moment. And to calculate a X and a Y, we need to do the free bar diagram equilibrium equation of the AC bar. Let's first take the AC bar first. Uh, so So uh, as I said in the previous steps, uh, we need to put all the force uh, here. So for the force, we know that we have the AX and AY. And again, I don't want to like to figure out what direction of the, sh the reaction force should be provided by the A. So I just put everything in the positive X and the positive Y direction. So this is, let's assume that this is AX and a y and the second thing we need to figure out is um this point e the equivalent concentrated force for this distributed force so what is the equivalent equivalent concentrated force anybody Anybody, what is the equivalent concentrated force? Six kilonewtons. Yes, yes. Location? Three meters from A. Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, so it should be at the middle point. And the equivalent uh, concentrated force should be uh, one kilonewton per meter times six meter. Um, so it should be six. And there is also a point B here. So how should I put the force provided from the B point to the AC bar? So upwards. Upwards. Like this. So this is the force B. Any different answer? It should be diagonal. So the force is, the bar is from D to B. So it should be diagonally sort of upwards from that direction because the, the shape of the bar doesn't matter. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, that's why I intentionally put this example problem here. So this is also like most confused part for the students in my previous semesters. Um, Students forgot about the two force member. Uh, so I think when you say it's upward, maybe you get confused about this one with uh, this one. So here, when I said it's only perpendicular to the rod or perpendicular to the slot, it's because it's free to move 
the structure itself is free to move in this actual direction. That's why the force is only per provided per perpendicular to this rod or to this rod direction. But in our situation, first, let's solve this problem first. Uh, in our situation, it cannot. This you can consider is a is a is a point that it cannot move in this direction or this direction, right? So it's different situation. And second is a two force member. Some students um commonly made a mistake was that they put uh when they see this one, they say, okay, it has the force bx and by. So said, I don't know, it provides the force in the two in the x and the y direction. Then you will figure out the problem is that when I do the free ball diagram here, when I have bx and by, you see what the problem? You cannot solve anything because now you have four unknowns, ax, ay, bx, by. You have four unknowns. You only have three equations. Force in the x direction equal to zero. Force in the y direction equal to zero. Force a moment about a point equal to zero. You have three equations. You have four unknowns. You cannot solve the problem, right? And the only way that you can solve this problem is that you know that the BX pair should not be independent. Actually, they should be in the direction of dB. So now this becomes one unknown. And now you have three unknowns and three equations. You can solve the problem. I see the black color. So this should be the force provided by the BD link. And the direction, let's put it this way, um, should be in the ratio. So this should be three, this should be four because here's a three, here's four. The force should be in this direction. Now, if some of you uh, feel confused, again, <laughs> I screenshot something from the statics textbook. Uh, the two force body, body, it really doesn't matter what shape the body is. It can be in any shape, it can be curved, any general shape. It does not need to be a straight bar. Of course, so when you see straight bar, you automatically know that a force is in the bar actual direction. But if it's in this direction, it's this shape, still, if you want everything in our mechanics materials class or anything <laughs> in general in any grad class, it's in equilibrium. And if you want to make sure that this part is in equilibrium, it has to be passed through the BD or in this chain AB line. In any other line, it will generate a moment to rotate your structure. Then your structure, this bar, is not in equilibrium. There's only one way to make it in equilibrium. That is force should be in the line of the AB line. Of course, it can be compression, it can be tension, but it has to be in the AB line. And this structure itself can be any shape. Make sense? So there are a lot of content that you need to review in the statics. Um, I want to emphasize again, it's very important because this is the, for the almost all the problem we're gonna solve for this semester, find the internal force, internal memory is always the first step. If you mess the first step, the whole rest part doesn't make any sense. So <laughs> please, uh, at the beginning of the semester, when you still have some time, read your statics textbook. And if you have any question, come to my office. I'm happy to help you um, with any question you may have. So very important part, the BD direction should be, um, sorry, the force applied at B should be a given information. Now, if we know this one, uh, class in the 45, right? I think we still have time. Um, 
equilibrium equation. Moment about B point equal to zero. So in this way, we can calculate AY because B, F, B, D and A, A, X path through the B point. So we can calculate AY easily. So in this equilibrium equation, uh, the force will generate a, I don't know. This equivalent constructive force um, generate a counterclockwise bending uh, counterclockwise moment. So it's 6.1, 6 times 1. The moment arm is 1 meter. So this distance is 1. It's at middle point of the, of the AC bar. And uh, AY can generate a clockwise, so it's negative. And the moment arm is 4 meter. That's it, equal to zero. And we calculate AY equal to 1.5. And this positive value means, again, the actual reaction force in the Y direction at point A is the same as what we assumed at the beginning, since it's, uh, we originally assumed upward and get positive value, it means that the actual reaction force is upward. And which makes sense because now you see that the external applied force downward you kind of expect that reaction force is upward to balance. Now let's calculate the force in the y direction equal to zero. Now we have the AY, which is 1.5. Uh, I don't know what's happening. And we have uh, six kilonewton downward, and we have the FBD. Uh, the Y component equal to zero. So FBD equal to 7.5. Force in the X direction equal to zero. Now this one, AX plus um, the X component of BD, BD is 7.5 equal to zero. So AX equal to negative six kilonewton. Uh, again, the negative means that the actual uh, reaction force applied at point A in the X direction should be this direction. Opposite of what we assumed at the beginning. Now, we figure out X, A, Y, then we can take the free bar diagram of the A, E section. So I put the AX. This six can you turn? AY, 1.5. Um, what do they couldn't consider force? What is the equivalent consider force for the distributed force yeah. here? Mm -hmm. Wait, six. Six. Uh, no. Six, again, you need to be very careful. Six is the whole beam. Now we only take AE section. Right? It's the same as what I said here. Some students put it in the, uh, said it's like 270 times uh, this length. That is the equivalent constant force of the whole beam. 
But when we take the CB section, we only check the concentrated force above the CB section. And same thing here. When we so take three, two. Because E point is here. So two times one. Make sense? This dimension is two. So length here is two. Always be clear, like what section of free bar diagram you're you are checking. So, and the equivalent of concentrated force for the distributed force should be different when you take a different section. And on this cutting surface, again, check reduction nodes. Uh, I will do it very quickly. So this should be the positive, positive moment. And on this cutting surface, the positive shear force is downward based on sign convention, sign convention of the internal force app uh, as a cutting surface. Um, equilibrium equation of the AE section force in X direction equal to zero. So basically NE minus six equal to zero. N E equal to six. Uh, force in the Y direction equal to zero. Then upward we have the AY 1.5 positive. We have equivalent concentrated force downward two, and uh, also the VE internal shear force is always is also uh, based on coordinates is downward equal to zero. Then NE no VE shear force here negative point five kilo newton. Again, this negative means that the actual internal force um, at point E is in this direction. It's opposite of what we originally assumed. Um, and uh, the bending moment equilibrium equation, let's take a moment about E. It's, I think this will simplify our calculation compared to other points. So, now for moment about point E, because AX, the six kilonewton pass through E, if you do generate zero moment, but 1.5, we generate a clockwise. Um, so negative 1.5 moment arm is two, right? The moment arm is two meter. Um, uh, and the equivalent concentrated force it will generate counterclockwise, so it's positive times one and and E equal to zero. Any question? Instead of doing the free body diagram directly, it would be considered wrong if I be reaction force at BX, BY, then make then made a second free body diagram. Uh, to find those unknown forces, you won't you won't be able to solve the problem if you don't consider BD as two force member. Make a second free body of other members. No, you cannot solve the problem. The key thing of this one is that you need to realize this one is two force member and you need to realize the force at D direction should be in the line of BD. And the force at the B direction should be 
in the line of BD. Either tensile compressed, it doesn't matter, but it should be in the in this line. If you cannot figure out this, this is two force member, you cannot solve the problem. I, as I explained in the beginning, you have four unknowns, you have three equations. Any other question? Um, so for the third one, I will post the solution and also I will, I will update, up, update this one, uh, the screenshot from the, uh, from the statics textbook and I will update the file on Canvas. And the first start from the next class, I will start our Mechanics Materials content. The, our review part is done. Um, if you have any, any questions, uh, come to my office. I, I, I need to go to campus now. Uh, so I may be in the office a little late, uh, but I will stay in the office for one hour. Um, thank you uh, for coming to class and I will see you soon. Bye. Thank you, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, have a great day. Great day. Thank you. Thank you. Have to make a 90 degree. Always have to make it. I don't understand. Um, 90 degree angle. Okay, yeah, I think someone helped me. In order to consider two force member. No, 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 no. It does not need to be 90 degree. As I said, it can be in any shape. Um, Let's go back. Let's go back here. It can be in this shape or it can be in this shape. It doesn't matter. In the end, you want to make this component like in equilibrium, not rotate. That's the only way the force inside uh, 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 at, at, in, in, the, in the structure. It does not need to be in 90 degree. It can be in any shape. Uh, uh, we will only take attendance start from after the drop and de uh, add deadline. So today's attendance is not taken. So you don't need to worry about the internet problem. Okay. <laughs>